Welcome to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on dividing fractions and mixed numbers. Before we begin this lesson, there are some things that you really should make sure that you know. You should make sure you know what fractions are, how to simplify fractions, basic multiplication, which just means your times tables, mixed numbers and improper fractions, more specifically converting between mixed numbers and improper fractions, and how to divide. So make sure you know those and let's get started. So what exactly happens when you're dividing whole numbers? I wanted to start with dividing whole numbers because it's easier for students to understand division when you're using whole numbers before talking about dividing fractions and mixed numbers. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we had 15 divided by three. And here we have 15 circles. Now what exactly is gonna happen to these 15 circles when we say 15 divided by three? Before we talk about that, let's think more specifically about what 15 divided by three means. This 15 here is called the dividend. It talks about what you're actually dividing or what you're splitting up. And this here is called the divisor. The divisor is exactly how you're splitting up the dividend. And there are tons of ways to word it. I just wanna use one specific sentence and we're gonna use that sentence in order to make division a little bit simpler. And the sentence is, how many divisors can go into the dividend? So in this example, when we have 15 divided by three, we're really asking how many threes can go into 15? So, let's get back to the problem and see what happens. So we're taking this 15 and we're seeing how many threes can go into 15. Well, I have a group of three here. That's one group of three. I have another group of three here. That's another group of three. I have another group of three here. Another group of three here. And another group of three here. So how many threes can go into 15? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, 15 divided by three equals five. Now, let's talk about this example where we have a whole number and a fraction. So let's go back to our terminology. We've got six divided by three fourths, where six is our dividend and three fourths is our divisor. Again, we'll go back to that question. How many divisors can go into the dividend? So we're basically asking in this question, how many three fourths can go into six? So let's get back to the problem. Now again, I want to take this six and I want to see how many three fourths can go into it. So what I'm gonna to do to each of these whole circles is I'm going to break them up into fourths. Now, each circle consists of fourths. There's four pieces in this circle, four in this circle, four in this one, and this one, and this one, and in this one. But we're not talking about just fourths, we're talking specifically about three fourths. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make the three fourths from each circle one color, and that extra piece another color. So this is three fourths, this blue here is three fourths, the blue here is three fourths, here is three fourths, here is three fourths, and here is three fourths. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these three fourths and I'm gonna put them over here. Now I have all these extra pieces and I wanna see how many three fourths I can make with these pieces. So I'm gonna rearrange them, check this out. So here, I have another group of three-fourths, and here I have another three-fourths. So going back to the original sentence, how many three-fourths can go into six? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Therefore, six divided by three-fourths equals eight. 
So let's take a look at this example. It's a little bit trickier because both numbers that we have in our division statement are fractions. Now let's take a deeper look. Here's our one half, and that one half is our dividend. One fourth is our divisor. So here's that question again. How many divisors can go into the dividend? So what we're really asking when we say one half divided by one fourth, we're really asking how many one fourths can go into one half. Let's go back to the question. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a circle. And from the circle, I want to create a half. So let's do that. I now have one half. This blue piece is one half. And I'm going to see how many fourths can go into that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break the circle up into fourths. So I have one fourth here, one fourth here, one fourth here, and one fourth here. So now let's think about that. How many fourths can go into one half? Now I only care about the blue, so I'll get rid of the rest. And how many pieces do you see here? How many fourths make up the one half? Well, I see one. 2. Therefore, 1 half divided by 1 fourth equals 2. So we've gone over some models to see exactly what's happening when we're talking about division. So now we're going to talk about how to do it. Before we can talk about how to actually calculate it mathematically, we need to know what reciprocals are. It sounds like a really fancy word, but reciprocals aren't that hard to understand. Reciprocals are the flip forms of a fraction. Every reciprocal must be a fraction. If you have a whole number and you're trying to find the reciprocal of a whole number, you must put that whole number over one and then flip that new fraction that you just made. And for mixed numbers, these are a little bit trickier because what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make these mixed numbers improper fractions. Let's look at an example. Here we have 3 over 7. If I wanted to find the reciprocal of 3 over 7, I would just switch the 3 and the 7, and that would give us 7 over 3. So the reciprocal of 3 over 7 is 7 over 3. How about 10? Well, this is a whole number, and whenever we have a whole number, in order to find the reciprocal of a whole number, you've got to put it over 1. So I'll put 10 over 1. And now I'll just flip that, and that'll give me 1 over 10. So the reciprocal of 10 over 1 is 1 over 10. Here's another example. Ooh, this one's a mixed number. This one's a little bit tricky. So what do we do when we have a mixed number? Well, what a lot of students would say is that you would just take the 1 and the 5 and you switch it. But that's not true. You have to be careful. Even though there is a fraction in a mixed number, it is not entirely a fraction. Therefore, in order to find the reciprocal here, you're going to have to make an improper fraction. To do that, we'll multiply 5 times 8, which will give us 40, and add the 1. That'll give us 41. So our new improper fraction is 41 over 5. And I'll take that and I'll flip it. That'll give me the reciprocal. So 41 over 5 will become 5 over 41. So again, the reciprocal of 41 over 5 is 5 over 41. So before you start dividing your fractions, you've got to make sure that every number is a fraction. If this is not a fraction, make it so. If it's a whole number, put it over 1. If it's a mixed number, make it improper. But your first number, your dividend, and your second number, your divisor, both must be fractions. And then we'll use a method called KCF. And here's how that works. The K stands for keep. That means that we'll just keep the dividend exactly the same. So we started with 2 over 7, so we'll just keep 2 over 7. The C stands for change. So we're changing division into multiplication. So this division sign will become a multiplication symbol. And the F stands for flip, which means to just find the reciprocal 
of whatever your divisor is. So in this example, our divisor is 4 over 21. So we'll flip that to make 21 over 4. And then we'll just multiply our fractions. We've got 2 times 21, and that's 42, and 7 times 4, and that's 28. So we'll get 42 over 28. But this fraction is improper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my final answer a mixed number. So let's do that. And when we do that, we get... 1 and 14 over 28. But again, this 14 over 28, that can be reduced. I can divide both the top and bottom by 14, which means that this 14 over 28 will actually be 1 half. Therefore, our final answer is 1 and 1 half. So how about this question here? Well, we already know that we need to make sure that every number is a fraction. But we also need to make sure we know that if numbers are not written in standard division notation, we should rewrite the question. Because in this notation, the divisor is first and the dividend is second. But that's not exactly what we need to have here. We need to make sure we have the standard notation. So we'll make sure we have the dividend first and the divisor second. Then we can go back to our method of keep change flip. Now, even though we have everything set up in KCF, we still can't do anything. And the reason why is because we don't have fractions yet. We have a mixed number here and a mixed number here. So let's change this. We'll make this improper. In case you don't remember how, we've got 4 times 3 is 12. And 12 plus 3 is 15. Therefore, we'll just write 15 over 4. And this 2 and 1 12 will change the same exact way. 12 times 2 is 24. Plus the 1, 25. So this will become 25 over 12. And then we'll go through each column separately. K stands for keep. So this 15 over 4, we'll just keep it as 15 over 4. The C stands for change. And we're going to change this division to multiplication. So we'll put a multiplication symbol here instead. And the F stands for flip. So we'll change the divisor to its reciprocal. And this 25 over 12 will become 12 over 25. And then we'll just multiply our numbers. We'll multiply 15 times 12, and we'll multiply 4 times 25, and that'll give us 180 over 100. But again, we're trying to get our final answer, and this is improper. So let's make this a mixed number. Well, 100 goes into 180 one whole time, with 80 as a remainder, that'll give us 1 and 80 over 100. But I can definitely reduce this, even though the numbers are big. I know that I can divide both 80 and 100 by 20, and that'll give me 4 fifths. So our final answer here is 1 and 4 fifths. Here's another example. Again, remember that we always have the note to make sure every number is a fraction, but we also need to make sure that we are using standard division notation. And if you ever see this, all this means is the number on top is getting divided by the number on the bottom. So let's change that. Let's go back to our standard notation and it'll look just like this. So now we've got 21 over 22 divided by seven. And now that we have it set up like this, we can go back to KCF. But my first question is this, is everything here a fraction? Not yet. The 21 over 22 is a fraction, but the seven is not. And how do we turn the seven into a fraction? Well, we have to put it over one. So let's do that. We'll bring the seven up and put a one under it. And now we can actually get started with KCF. K stands for keep. So we'll keep 21 over 22. Let's just bring it down. The C stands for change. And we're changing this division into multiplication. So let's write the multiplication symbol right here. And the F stands for flip. And what's happening is we're going to flip the 7 over 1 into its reciprocal. So this is going to become 1 over 7. So now I'll just multiply across. 21 times 1 is 21. 22 times 7 is 154, so I'll write 
21 over 154. But this can definitely be reduced, and I know that I can divide both 21 and 154 by 7. And when I do that, I get my answer in the simplest form, which is 3 over 22. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. Hit the pause button, and when you're done, unpause the video, and followed by a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answers will be displayed. Ready, set, go. So let's take a look at our answers. Number one is one and a half. Number two is two over 21. Number three is three and one fifth. Number four is one and a half. Number five is three fifths. And number six is one over 130. So what exactly did we learn in this lesson? In order to divide by a fraction, every number must be a fraction. To turn a whole number into a fraction, you must put the whole number over 1. To divide mixed numbers, you must turn them into improper fractions. The flip form of a fraction is called the reciprocal. If a question uses any notation other than the standard division notation, you should rewrite it into standard notation. And the process used to answer division of fraction questions is keep, change, flip also known as KCF. What do you keep? The dividend. What do you change? The division to multiplication. And what do you flip? The divisor. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.